Hey there, so it's me again. I'm going to tell you now about other non-optical telescopes. So, so far we spoke about the ones that use lenses, the refracting. We spoke about the reflecting that use mirrors. We even compared the advantages and disadvantages and differences that they have. And now I'm going to go to other telescopes, okay, that are non-optical. So that means that they capture uh, images other than just visible light, which we have been talking so far, okay? So this is the same nebula, the Crab Nebula, and this is at different wavelengths. So you have radio waves, infrared, the visible light, high energy X-ray, low energy X-ray, and ultraviolet radiation. And maybe what you can see from this image is that some things that you would not be able to look and to notice from the visible light image are going to show in the other wavelengths, okay? So to summarize it all and to, you know, kind of break the news straight away, we can use other non-optical telescopes to gather on features that we would not see, features about whichever object I want that I would not see if I would only use visible light. So different wavelengths may give me different information and therefore can give me uh, more stuff about uh, whichever object I'm trying to see. So in this case, the nebula can give me more information about the nebula. Maybe I didn't see there is a huge X-ray emission at the center from this visible light image, but here the X-ray image does show that, okay? So different telescopes, different wavelengths will show you different things and then it allows us to study whatever we want a little bit further okay so non-optical telescopes so this is uh, one of the images that we have the very fam famous one most of these images that we see and that we look they are actually not just visible light images they are composites so it means that are images that have more just one wavelength showing this one, for example, of the Re uh, Whirlpool Galaxy, has ultraviolet, infrared, and visible light. And it is showing me, for example, places where they are quite hot. Maybe it's places where stars are forming at the moment, or maybe there are uh, places where there is an event at the moment uh, where there is a lot of ultra-infrared radiation being given out, okay? So I can get information from this image that I wouldn't get if I would only have the visible light. Another example, this is the Milky Way in infrared. You need to imagine this image, this side of the image, and this side to be connected, okay? So this is an actual 360 image of the Milky Way um, galaxy, okay? So it shows different parts of, um, of the Milky Way, things that we wouldn't see, and again, it shows the hotter regions, things that we wouldn't be able just to get from our visible light, okay? Other examples, I have Eta Caterina in visible light in here, okay, and then I have an ultraviolet image of the sun just to stand out uh, some of the things a little bit better. Here, for example, I have the sunspots where there is quite a lot of activity here, all right, so maybe a visible image would not show me the same, right? I have the same image of Cassiopeia here with visible and x rays, and you can see in the visible light, which is a negative image, maybe you can see exactly that there was an explosion there somewhere happening, okay? But on the other hand, the X-ray ima image is going to show me that I have some gas around that must be temp uh, at temperatures of about 10 million Kelvin or higher. I could never be able to understand that just by looking at a visible image, but here, because these colors are being captured, they need to me to have a minimum of 10 million Kelvin of temperature, okay? So, as I told you already, imaging at different wavelengths can make different features stand out in the same part of the sky, and therefore, I can get more information about whichever object I am looking for. Now there, I'm going to show you three different images of the supernova, uh, uh, supernova remains, okay? They were taken by three different telescopes or observatories. So that's the first one. And in here, you can clearly see one big part here, one supernova, two, and maybe you can see that there's something in here, but you don't quite know what it is, right? However, if you go to another X-ray image, you can see that the first 
um, supernova that you couldn't see, or the last uh, one actually, is now more evident. So maybe, well, the first wavelength would not show me that I had a supernova in there. The second image is showing that. And then finally, a gamma image of the same supernova is going to show me that actually that tiny bit of space that I had there that didn't show a lot is actually the one that emits more gamma radiation, so radiation with the higher frequencies. So again, this is just another example how um, using different electromagnetic um, radiation, so different parts of the spectrum, is going to give you different um, features of something. So I'm going to go to the why we need telescopes in space later on. So see you in the next video. Bye. Yes.